So good morning or afternoon, depending on what time you're listening to this podcast, and welcome to Do Geeks Have Others, the show where we ask the unanswered and answer the unasked, looking at news and online stuff too. I'm Michael Gooch, and joined by my good friend Matthew Thompson. You right, mate? I'm going to have a kick, yeah? Good. Let's start the show. Wait, I want to try to... Okay, oh, Michael, Matt. since your headphones are easier to take off, could you grab me those ear defenders? Yes, well, you want to try putting them over the top? Yeah. Since mine are a bit of a pain. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's a really good idea. Oh, oh this is going to feel weird. Oh, my God. Matt, how does, how does that sound? It's, it, oh, it's, good. it's working. It better? It's working. Did you know that's how um that's how some people when they're recording singing try and do it. So like with this, I can't hear anything in here. If I played music, I can't hear it. Yeah. So they plug uh, a set of like those in ear headphones in here, yeah. and then they slide them underneath these headphones, and then they can hear themselves and they can hear the music. Apparently that works really well. It's a good good idea. Okay, I believe you're touching because you can you can hear it. You can hear it all. You 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 wear it. You wear such a puffy jacket I, to, do you know what? to these things. Do you know it's what? Like, <laughs> no, I've t- no, no, I've d- no. I'm freezing in this shed, but I've taken off my coat so I don't make a lot of noise. You can't hear me moving. But you're in like, you've like you got a footstool. Do you know what I thought of that what? before I came here? What? I didn't even think about the headphones, but I thought I had, I, I, should, I had a dressing gown and a fluffy shirt on my bed. And you, and you would have remembered that before because Matt's borrowed yeah, my Yeah, I had it. I was like, now. I'm going to bring that, but I'm walking, so I can't bring it. Matt's got um, some in ear phones. He's got earphones in, and he's got some ear defenders over the top, and he's claiming that they sound exactly like headphones. Um, do they really sound just they, like headphones? Do you, do you want to try them? It's actually mad. I will after the show. I can't hear but, like, shit. I, I can see you being like really happy, so I, I believe they're working. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? I don't know. Are you cold? Am I cold? Not very at the minute. I I brought you a spare hoodie. Did you actually? Yes. Yeah, oh, that's nice. There. Oh no, is it here? Did I move it over? Uh, did you forget that as well? No, no, I brought it. It's over there, I think. Oh, that's nice. Good afternoon or morning. I don't know when you're uh, when you're listening to this. Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. You're doing good. How are you? I'm well, Matt. I'm well. Thanks for asking. <laughs> episode one's out, Matt. Did you like episode one? Mate, I loved it. Good, because because uh, we were in it, Matt. We were in episode one. Chad, absolute nonsense for exactly 15 minutes and one second it was great yeah it's good fun With the sounds and everything i know but think think about this now matt we're in episode two we're two episodes in matt give ourselves a round of applause that's 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 a good job two episodes in boom um first thing that i do want to talk about matt i have got something i do want to talk about yeah, it's something talk. that I, I promised i was going to talk about this episode because uh, i actually didn't know last episode i don't remember what it was you don't remember what it was about you can't remember what you no. had for break didn't remember your headphones no. you've got some like makeshift headphones on at the minute uh, it's still with crocodiles, Matt. Crocodiles, and oh, yeah. um, I read this thing that they're basically immortal, and that they only die when they fall off cliffs or get eaten by predators. No one know exactly how long a crocodile lives for. Um, and so I, I went home that night, and I looked it up, because I, I wanted to know the answer to this. Um, and the thing is, this, this post has been around. This, this idea has been making itself around. But a, uh, I'm going to attempt to pronounce the word right, because I know I'll get it wrong. Uh, crocologist. Or maybe it's just crocologist. Maybe I'm just trying to add. A crocologist, an ologist of crocs, has, um, not the shoes, has been um, talking about this idea. That yeah. crocs are immortal. And he says, it's just absolute nonsense. He doesn't know exactly where people are getting this idea from that they're immortal. But some crocodiles um, live for, to around 70 years, which is still quite old. So they do... They so do they die, do basically. Know. 70 years to 100 years are most Oh, well, yeah, they're dinosaurs. Crocodiles. They're basically dinosaurs, yeah. They are dinosaurs. Yeah, they are basically dinosaurs. No, um, and he he just doesn't really understand what what it's all about, of why he's saying here, um, his name's Adam, in dodgy science reporting, crocodiles are apparently immortal, question mark. No, they're not. They uh, They don't grow indefinitely, so they don't just... Keep, I think that was something else that people say is that crocodiles just keep on growing. Well, they don't keep growing. No, they don't keep growing. Do snakes keep growing? Right, this is another thing I've got to look at. No, snakes do not keep growing. They grow... Um, you don't know. To, well, I do know that. No, it I'll re- depends I'll on the breed. this while we're chatting. depends on the breed of snake is how long they grow on for. Yeah. Um, 
the biggest one being the. Do you know about the Titan boa or Titan boa? There's some been some big snakes up there. There have been like some big snakes. The, the, snakes. the Titan boa is a prehistoric snake which grew, uh, I think it was over ten meters. I think it was. I think I, I think it might even be fifty meters. See, I can't even remember that. But I just know it was a big snake, yeah. massive snake. Like it was the thickness. Was if, if if we were to hug right now, Matt, if we were to have a nice nice <coughs> hug, we still wouldn't be combined. We would not be as thick as that snake. No. Is a thick, thick old snake. The, um, the largest snake can reach up to nine metres. At the minute. So then it's definitely way over ten metres was the was the Titan of Boa. Um but so what do you think about the crocodiles not being immortal now, Matt? Are you sad at that? <coughs> I thought it was do crocodiles have udders? <sighs> oh no. <laughs> Matt, I'd, crocodiles don't have udders. I don't know how to. No, no, I don't no. Know how no. To would they be scaly? To, right, I answered that in the last episode, Matt. They would not be nah, scaly because there's no such thing as armor-plated udders. <laughs> That'd be sick, though. Matt, I've got some good news for you. What's the good news? I've got pencil Michael? news for you, Matt. Wow. A pencil question, Matt. Matt, what is your favourite pencil? Uh, a HB two. HB two. Is that is that a pencil or a gas, Matt? Is you, you, he's, he's not so sure. Uh, it's it's the most common pencil, a HP pencil, isn't it? It's called a number number two pencil, Matt. But here's the question, Matt, because yeah. you've fallen right into my trap now. Oh no! Why is it called a number two pencil, Matt? Where is the number one pencil? What is a number one pencil? I don't know. Is it a smaller size? I mean, it's what, what do you, what do you mean? As a smaller pencil? Yeah. Do you mean a sharpened like, pencil, Matt? Like you have the ones. I know it's not this, but you have like the ones at IKEA, whatever it's called. So, you, so a number one one pencil is a naturally a small, s- small, ones, small yeah. pencil. I mean, it's it's not it's not you know that far. I guess no, I'm, it's that's miles away, Matt. It's miles away. Because oh, because that's like say sharpen sharpen a number two pencil, it just becomes a number one pencil according to your. Uh, your rule yeah that's how but, you resell them uh number one pencils do exist well, they, they do they, they do are. exist i can so pencil makers they manufacture number one two two point five three and four pencils um and sometimes apparently they do other numbers i presume that's just if they feel like it they feel yeah. like hey look dave let's 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 go, let's go Mate, crazy we yes. should have gone to the pencil museum then we would have known this all we we should have done we yeah. uh, we kept we kept joking about the pencil museum i think we've reached that age where we're like now we're going to go there for a yeah, laugh I, like, I feel like we should probably enjoy whereabouts was the pencil museum do you even uh, remember was it in the lakes was it in the lakes i can't remember that but we've passed it like a billion times now we have we have passed it i yeah. think it was in the lakes i don't know you can Google it. You guys can Google it. We've we've been past that. We know it. Exists yeah, somewhere. we've been there so many times. Um, yeah. And so yeah. So apparently, H indicates hardness, the hardness of the pencil, and B indicates blackness of pencil. And so HB is a just a perfect balance between both of them. Apparently, lowest on the scale is nine H, uh, indicating a pencil with extremely hard lead, uh, but produces a really light. A light mark. Uh, I presume, like, um, well, yeah, just just a light light. Have you pencil. got any pencils like that on you? Not on me, no. I should have brought them. Actually, to be fair, I've got a bunch of sketching pencils at home. Um, cool. But apparently, F also uh, is in the mix as well. F indicates a pencil that sharpens to a fine point. So apparently, you've got um, B equals a number one pencil. H B is a number two. F is a two and a half. H is a number three, and two H is a is a number four but apparently these 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 matt these can depend on the brand so why though do we use number two pencils matt and not number one because they're cheaper no no that's not no apparently it's just it's it's as boring as you would have thought this podcast today was going to be you're talking about pencils it's just mate they're really exciting pencils love pencils um apparently number two pencils just cooperate better with technology because this is actually exciting this is this is educational this is what you're going to be chatting to your mates about later you're going to be saying how you've been part of this really really great conversation to do with pencils yep apparently um they cooperate better number two pencils with technology because early machines Use the electrical conductivity of the lead um, to read the pencil marks. And early scanning and scoring machines couldn't detect marks made by harder pencils. So number three, number four pencils usually resulted in like erroneous results. And softer pencils like number one's smudge. So apparently they're just impractical to use. Number two 
it's apparently just the perfect balance of pencils. So that is why we mainly use number two pencils, Matt. Amazing. Yeah, you feel educated now, don't you? I'm going to forget. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> Matt, Michael, I've got a question for you. Tell me. Are you ready? It's a proper question. Yeah. Matt. I want a proper answer. Yeah. Because we need to do more questions on this. Tell show. me the question. How long is an awkward silence? How long would That's you give six it? Six minutes and a half. Six and a half minutes. Yeah. Why six and a half minutes? You would sit there for if we were just having a chat. Say say we've covered every topic now in the world. We get to the end of the show. You would sit there next to me for six and a half minutes before you would say something or just leave. Yeah. That's quite nice, isn't it? It's quite nice company. But r- so really, like with I'd with fart before I go. But yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's just sort of like you're leaving call though, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Remember me. But like genuinely, do you? Do you think actually an awkward silence is that long? Or I don't know, Michael. It depends who you're with. You can tell I'm trying to cause an awkward silence, can't you? Yeah, yeah. You, you can. Um, did you get awkward? That's for sure. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, as uh, as many people online uh, found when um, a university was doing a uh, study on this, because you know yeah. that's clearly what universities are all about. Um, they uh, believe around four to five seconds four to five four to five seconds yeah is an awkward that's silence bad. um do you so you you think an awkward silence is longer than uh is longer than that depends who you're with if you're with the headmaster a bit awkward if you're with your mum it's calm see so, you, so you're saying if it was a headmaster you'd give it four seconds before you think you should say something i'll just go if if you're with if with your mum you would you would wait six and a half <laughs> minutes before mom. before responding to her she she calls down. Mrs. Mrs. Thompson's there. She she calls Matthew. You'd give six and a half minutes before you go. Oh yeah, my mum wanted me. Yes, but thankfully, I know you love Wikipedia. Wiki How. Yes. Has uh, has given some um, some suggestions for how to break an awkward silence, Matt. I think we, I think we should um, should try them out, Matt. So, number one, fart. You could n- no, that's not number one. That's like number five. Number one. Is uh, learn some basic icebreakers, Matt. Very simple one. Learn some basic uh, icebreakers. Don't need a uh, world class speaking skills because I know you're going to struggle with that um, to make small talk. So apparently, just using little questions um, like "So where where are you from?" Uh, or "How do you know mutual friend?" It says. Do, would you use them, Matt, if you were in an awkward silence? What if it was an awkward silence with your ex? Cause they kind okay, of well, let's do that. It. Let's do that. Okay, then, so you're, that you're, I'm your ex. Hi. Okay. Hello there. Have you been? Yeah, I've, I've been good. Um, you? Fine. How was your husband? Dead. To me. You're, you were my husband. Oh. Uh, you're my ex. This, this, this got really weird then, didn't it? Um, tell me what you've been up to. See, Dude. you're you're struggling to even answer. Dealing My icebreakers are too good. I've been dealing with the kids. You've been dealing with the kids. Yeah. Oh, how are they? The one you left. The one I left. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. When you took our house, all did our you get money. the flowers I sent? I threw them in the bin. You see the bin? That's not a nice thing to do. Why'd you do that? Can I have the dog back? You can't. It have was the dog my back. dog. It was it my dog. It wasn't your dog. I need him back. You're not having the dog back. It's my. I can't see without my dog. By the way, I booked a holiday um, next week that I can't make it to. Would you like to go on it with the kids? No. Why not? I don't need your money you stole from us. I didn't steal the money. I earned the money myself. Lies. I, I earned it all. I see, I feel like you're struggling more than I am well, to yeah. come up with answers to my questions. So I'm going to give that a tick. I think icebreakers are basic icebreakers. Basic questions works really well. <laughs> An easier way to say you want a Pringle. N- no, that's it. Stop advertising Pringles Why on the show. Why don't you want a Pringle? I don't want a Pringle, Matt. Um, number two is think of topics ahead of time. So if you're going to a social event or something... Um, like doing this show, for example, you would think of topics to talk about beforehand. That would help. That would help, wouldn't it, Matt? Um, so I mean, we can tick that because I've done that because I've got my A4 paper in front of me, my three pages worth. Matt's just got a tube of Pringles he's been munching on for the past like five episodes. Yeah. Um, I keep in the fridge. Yeah. Number three is, is something that I was trying to do, oh. but you were really struggling with. Um, was make sure you open uh, you ask open ended questions so ones that don't just rely on it yes or no so uh, I mean at points when I think I went like you know, how have you been and I think you went good yeah 
that doesn't help Matt. I that know. doesn't help me. That makes it difficult for me. I know. Um, but I mean, that that still worked though, because I got you talking at some point, and you ended up making up a whole story about these, this kid I left and this dog that's yours that I've nicked or something, or the money I've stole. So again, tick. I'm ticking that box, Matt. Um, number four again was avoid flat responses. I never answered with yes or no. So I'm going to give that a tick because I did that well. You didn't do that well, Matt. Um, I'm the ex. Leave me alone. So number me. number five is one that you would definitely like, Matt. Yeah. It just says, in an awkward sense, take a graceful exit. How would you take a graceful exit, Matt, from a conversation? Flip the table. Flip the table. That's very graceful. Yeah. That's very graceful, Matt. Hey, thanks for listening to our podcast. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future episodes. And why not follow us on Twitter too because... I don't really know why, but there might be some behind the scenes stuff and info about any future shows, link in the description below. Got a question that you think needs a proper answer or maybe has yet to even be asked? Drop it in the comments below and we might include it in a future episode. Until next time.